So again, I wanted to welcome you both um, to your Q&A for your amazing uh, narrative feature called A Hard Problem. So I want to introduce you both. Um, as a um, writing, directing, producing, I'm assuming also team, Hazard is your name. And uh, we have Kyle and Matt with us today. So um, right. I'm really excited to kind of dive in and ask you a few questions. So I will get started um, kind of with sort of an overarching thought and question. Um, obviously the theme of your film is exploring the, the idea of AI, its um, potential for emotional intelligence and human quality. Um, what I was really blown away with and really loved about your film is the way that you framed it from a story perspective and how it's very opposite of what you would expect from an AI movie. So, you know, the way you brought in the characters and began the story, the audience almost had no um, choice, if you will, at least in my perspective, I didn't, to feel nothing but human empathetic feeling for this character, Ian, um, the lead character, before you had any idea of his true nature. And I really found that interesting and refreshing. And I'm wondering um, if we could kind of start by talking about the writing, what you guys um, had intended when you began writing, if that was part of the intention, if it just kind of happened organically as you began writing and just talk a little bit about that process. Um, yeah, I think we, the thing that sort of started the whole idea was what if, um, or the seed of the whole idea was like, what if you gave religion to a robot as a way to convince it to turn itself off? That's like where we started from a writing perspective. Um, and it evolved from there, but we always knew that we wanted to tell sort of a, a human story, I guess, in, in scare quotes, um, in that uh, we wanted to sort of pose the question of what if, you know, if we create a, a being with that um, looks and acts like us, will it be them that destroys us or us that destroys them? Um, and I think we've seen a lot of movies about AI sort of taking over the world and we sort of think it's much more likely that we'll wind up hurting some sentient being that we create you know, just from our own sort of small view of the world. Yeah, sort of just, <clears throat> um, it was more interesting to us to, yeah, ground it more in sort of a family drama. Uh, and we very much like the idea of not, of a movie starting and the viewer may not necessarily know they're watching a sci-fi genre um, because, you know, the story happens to touch on elements that are sci-fi, but it's not like itself, the setting is, isn't so important to be set in the future as just sort of a necess necessity to explore this idea of like, what happens if we create something that seems to be conscious, even though we can't possibly know if it is. And so um, that's sort of just how it all sort of evolved. Very cool. Um... Along those lines, getting into production and um, having Johnny Birch told as, as Ian, um, I found myself really observing him as an actor throughout it because he, to me, he had sort of this unique challenge in front of him to play an AI character, but to give it a healthy dose of human emotion, but not to the point that he crossed that line and you couldn't really get any sense of any AI from him. So with that being sort of the task that was put in front of him, how did you work with him? What was sort of the acting method styles or what, what did you guys kind of talk about to develop that mode for him um, on screen? Yeah, I mean, I, I, it was a, you know, Johnny's amazing and it was a very collaborative process um, and he brought a lot to it. You know, he also, because he got to play both Ian and Ivan, the sort of AI version of Ian, um, we got to play with like what those differences would be, um, especially up to the point when he realizes it and then can sort of make choices on his own. Um, but, you know, we didn't want to walk him, we didn't want it to ever really feel too robotic, um, just more, I don't know, maybe stoic rather than robotic. 
Yeah, I think it was more, in, we had conversations early on of like, you know, does he, what is the difference as far as like just any sort of um, surface level or movement or anything of that nature? And we were much more uh, on the side that we don't, we didn't necessarily think there should be much of a difference if, especially if the idea is supposed to be that not only do we not want the audience necessarily to pick up on it immediately, if the point of this technology that it's so seamless that it is supposed to be able, like so, you know, basically like a magic trick that if you yourself lost someone who died and they could essentially replace them and it seems basically, you know, like the person that you used to know, but there really shouldn't be much of a difference. And that sort of, uh, you know, rubs closer to the philosophical ideas and questions that we were sort of interested in in that if it acts very much like a human, but you know it's not a human, but it's act, but it's and it's reporting that it has, or at least in the case of Ian, it sort of has a self recognition and knows what it is. What do you do with that? Because, you know, no one's really right or wrong, and it gets very sort of murky and interesting. Right, and I found it interesting that a lot of the support characters, and I do want to talk um, about Olivia, the character Olivia as well, but. I found it interesting that a lot of the characters really varied in the way their characters were written and how they react to this AI technology, which I think, you know, if, if you were to extract your film, put it into reality, I think that would be the truth. There would be a lot of different reactions to, to it. So uh, to me, that made a lot of sense. You know, you had characters that were angry and completely separate. I, no matter how extraordinarily realistic it was. Um, and then others that obviously embraced it completely and, and wanted it to replace, you know, loved ones. So I found that really interesting, but um, Catherine who played Olivia, um, to me, my reaction to her was um, one of sort of a universal voice for, for a lot of us in the way that we Think about AI, what that might mean, investigating it, not thinking about its capabilities beyond what it's built for, and all those kinds of questions that we think about when we watch AI films and think about the future of AI. Was that sort of an intent with her role, or, um, or and if not, what what was kind of your thought about her? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, thanks for saying that. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly what we wanted Olivia to be a sort of stand in for the audience to as like a vehicle, you know, she represents all of us because I think, you know, the reaction to a person like Ian um, is going to have varied reactions and they're not necessarily like we don't know the right answer. Right. But it's certainly there's a question to be had that if technology advances as far as a lot of bright people think it might these are things we should ask before the technology is on our doorstep. Um, and, you know, something like the, the sort of ethical side of it, like what, where do they fall on the spectrum? You know, we try to make pretty conscious efforts to, to delineate between like the, the human people in the movie and then Ian, um, and then sort of showing like Cooey the dog and the robot vacuum is like, where on the spectrum do we put someone like Ian? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, I'm glad that I felt what you were intending, because. We, we are, we're too, we are too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is sort of a loaded question. You can kind of take it any way you want, but I really, truly think you guys had a really strong production and post-production game. I mean, you had really great cinematography, editing, special effects music composition, you name it. So um, I just wondering if you want to talk about any of those roles in particular, the team that you put together for that, anything um, of special interest that you're really extra proud of. So any anything along I, those lines. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, the a lot of that team you sort of rattled off uh, have been longtime <laughs> collaborators of ours and are incredibly talented. Our cinematographer Brando, uh, Brandon Alpern, we've known since uh, college. Our composer Omar, who, you know, I mean, definitely one of the highlights for us as like children of the 90s is getting to hear Radiohead's um, Paranoid. Uh, that was super cool. Um, our colorist Cody Baker, our editor Jeremy, um, all of them are like incredibly integral 
to our process as filmmakers. Um, they make everything we do better um, and they hide up all, they hide all of our mistakes that we made on set. Um, and yeah, I mean, and they were all involved from the very beginning. Um, you know, Omar was sending us sketches of music while we were shooting in Knoxville. Um, our colorist had, like he, we were sending him stills to play with. Um, Jeremy was cutting while we were shooting um, so that we could see, like uh, we spent a lot of time in that house obviously. So we were, we had sort of front loaded some important scenes in our schedule knowing that if we had missed a piece of coverage, we could come back. Um, so Jeremy was like cutting, um, scene 92, which is where Ian and Olivia meet. We shot that sort of early on knowing that it was a big scene and we wanted the ability to like go back if and we did wind up having to pick up a piece of coverage. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I mean, <clears throat> and then there's also like sort of more of the departments, uh, Curtis, our production designer, Melissa, um, our costume designer, who's like, they also had more of a challenge of there's only so much they could do. We shot on location in Knoxville and most of our keys, in fact, I think almost all of our keys are based out in Los Angeles. So there's only so much prep they could do in Los Angeles. And so, you know, their ability to get on the ground, get familiar with the area, find the like, you know, set dressing, uh, source costume and, and, and make alterations. Um, they had a very unique and uh, um, integral challenge that Obviously, uh, we think they did a great job, and so if it, and then I think on the post side, if the pandemic had any sort of silver lining, it suddenly gave us a much longer timeline. We suddenly didn't have any deadlines because there were nothing was happening in the world. Um, so we got to be way more meticulous in all of the like a hundred, I think, VFX shots. So we had to be very, very picky. Yeah. Um, Which Martin, our special <laughs> effects supervisor, handled very well. I mean, I the number of revisions on a lot of those shots that uh, you know the owl that lands him being taken apart like all that stuff was actually artists working literally around the world we had artists um outside of the country as well as eastern europe it, yeah. yeah in eastern europe as well as like all uh, within all spread out in the u.s because of certain specialties and being able to do stuff and then a, t a small team here in la but it was all done remotely by a uh, uh, pics and email. That is amazing. And I, yeah, I, I was going to ask a little bit more about the effects and um, yep. uh, that, that does sound like a blessing with COVID. It's a silver yeah. lining um, because I imagine that part of the process was fairly lengthy, which leads me to my next question, sort of like, what was the full timeline from very beginning, starting the project writing to when it was hot off the press? Gosh, when did we, I don't, um, probably 2017 is in and around when we have the idea and the script and then we're trying to <clears throat> hunt down like funding and, and seeing who we could get attached so, to it. So yeah, we, our producer, um, Rylan, <laughs> we met him in 2015, um, at a film festival, oh, 2016, 2016, yeah. 2016 at a film festival, uh, in Kansas called tall grass. Um, and we sort of kept in touch. And then, yeah, sometime in 2017 or 2018, we got in touch with him with a script, um, uh, which he responded to and liked. And then he brought on our producer, Adam. Um, we shot the movie in August, September of 2019. Um, we did 24 days in Knoxville, which is a great shooting town if people are looking for it. Uh, uh, great film office to work with. Um, and then we did two days here in Los Angeles for the end sequence and a couple other little things that T fall at high speed because getting a phantom in, um, in uh, Knoxville isn't the easiest thing. And then uh, Annabeth uh, did her part also here in LA and then maybe a couple inserts, I can't really remember. Um, but the, and the whole end sequence in the factory was done here in LA. Okay. Yeah, and I love the tee shot. I mean, it's just as impressive okay. as the effect stuff, you know, it's, thanks. I mean, it is its own effect, but it was beautiful. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, that's uh, just, uh, that. that's a phantom camera at like 1500 frames per second, but okay. everything there is practical. It's all, yeah, that's all real. Very cool. Um, so I'm wondering if, if the two of you as a team could kind of talk a little bit about where this movie falls in your careers together, kind of 
Um, and then where you're, you're going from here, if, if this film has opened up specific new opportunities or if you're working on some completely different things right now, just kind of talk about where you, where you guys are at. And um, I mean, it, it's our first feature, um, <clears throat> hopefully not our last. And uh, I mean, we've I, been, I doubt it will be. <laughs> uh, we've been working, we met in college and started, um, uh, we, you know, we, we didn't necessarily go to college looking for another writing and directing partner. We just ended up um, writing a short script together our sophomore year and then both decided we tried directing it together and it's just sort of worked out. Um, and so, um, but I mean, we spent close to a decade in physical production on a lot of TV and features. And then we're sort of on a path um, that I think a lot of people um, can familiar or, or can um, connect with in the industry and in that we are sort of, we are on a path towards a career in the film industry, not necessarily towards writing and directing. Cause that's a very, like, you kind of have to like make an effort to sort of pull away. So around 2013, end of 2012, beginning of 2013, we sort of like stepped back and started to really invest more in ourselves and, you know, did about four or five short films over a couple of years to try to like, um, uh, reuse that muscle instead of helping other people's stories get told, tell our own. And, um, and yeah, we, we have, uh, other features we're eager to get off the ground. It's just a matter of what connects and, you know, what, what dominoes sort of fall first. Yeah. I mean, we love the indie feature space for the creative freedom, um, and are very happy to make another indie feature. And I think that's sort of where where we'd like to go next. And there, we have a couple scripts, as Matt said, that we're trying to see which one goes first. Are they related to the same kind of stuff? Um, or are they completely different pieces? Yeah, no, they're not. They're, we're, we don't, I, we're hard pressed to like, to be, we don't have a specific genre that we really, really tend to drift towards. Um, I mean, one of them is sort of a, a horror comedy and the other is um, sort of a superhero satire. So yeah. they're all, I mean, we have, a, and then we have like a music biopic. So we're all, we're all over the map. So yeah, for I mean, better or worse. I think the thing that we like to think connects our work is just, we like exploring sort of bigger ideas or being able to hide bigger ideas into a hopefully entertaining and fun story. So while this is like a sci-fi, adjacent drama um you know it's more about like what it means to be a person um and you can take that into a lot of different directions and it can reflect on life and your views on the world in many different ways um and so i think all of our scripts sort of do that but we don't want to get we don't have another sci-fi script yet but maybe we will one day i don't know right on no that sounds great and that makes a lot of sense in terms of the, the thematic idea of personhood and how you view life and all the different ways that can go. So um, we're getting kind of towards the end here. So what I'd like to do is um, just kind of give you an opportunity to talk about any, any aspect of the film that I may not have asked you about that you would really like to put out there or um, share something with the audience about um, to kind of wrap things up. Sure. Um, well, I think to just sort of circle back something you did ask about, but I think something that um, often gets sort of overlooked, especially in these Q and A's, is like the team, like we just get to be here to represent the thing, uh, but this was made by a hundred some odd people uh, in, and in all the like big and small ways from the people who get, you know, their own title card to the people in the thank yous that came and did screenings at our house so that we could bounce ideas off other filmmakers and other moviegoers. Um, it really is like a team, filmmaking is a team sport. Um, and uh, we're just super proud of all of those people. And we couldn't have done that, made this without them. And I think, um, yeah, the, that that's sort of the, the community you build, the family you build on a film um, sometimes can be, you know, a dysfunctional one, but, but, but there's a lot of love there too. And I, we had a lot of fun with all these people and hopefully 
they all reflect back on it as something exciting that we got to do right before the world shut down. <clears throat> and I think the same could be said of film festivals, especially, um, which is maybe the bittersweet part of the pandemic is that even to this movie, you meet so many people physically going to festivals, other filmmakers, um, sometimes people in the audience and, and um, those have, um, t those tend to have legs and you tend to meet people that you like sort of continue a relationship with and end up um, working on each other's work or helping each other out. And so that's uh, another great part of the um, indie film process is doing the festival run, so. Yeah, thanks for having us. We really appreciate oh, absolutely. it. And, yes, I love doing Q and A's. <laughs> um, I, I really honestly do. And so um, I'm really glad to hear a lot of the kind of inner workings of, of your film and your space together as a team. So um, this was fantastic. And I hope that you get a chance to check out some of the rest of the festival and enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and um, I know we're not all there in person, but hopefully you can get to quote unquote, meet some, some people as well. So um, thank you again so much for joining us today and um, wishing you. you the best on the next project that decides to rear its head hopefully soon. Yes. Thank you so thank much. You. Thanks so much for having us. Very welcome.